Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just be officially um, updating you on some more current uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip so uh, there is a uh, lot to uh, negotiate um, on this uh, current uh, video uh, today but I'm just going to give you a bit more um, additional um, information um, in regards uh, to Mario uh, Lamina um, and all that so I have been giving you an update um, about him um, on a regular basis um, in the last uh, couple of days because it has been uh, circulating around uh, the mainstream uh, media saying that Manchester United um, have inquired um, about his services and reportedly Manchester United um, are interested in signing Mario Lamina. It also says that Arsenal have inquired um, about um, his services and it also says uh, that Leicester um, of course have inquired um, about um, his services but I do believe Mario uh, Lamina um, uh, wants to uh, leave uh, Southampton. Um, he has informed uh, Ralph um, Hassel and Huttle um, about uh, this and I think he has indicated out uh, that he wants to uh, stay um, in England but I think he's indicated of course uh, that he wants to uh, go to a big club you know to rejuvenate his career and of course uh, take um, his uh, footballing uh, career uh, to the next level but it has been coming out um, in the last uh, couple of days um, obviously Mario Lamina uh, had been uh, given a uh, permission uh, by Southampton you know, to uh, talk to uh, to, to uh, talk to um, other clubs, and I do believe Manchester United um, have been in talks uh, with Mario Lamina over a possible uh, switch uh, to um, Old Trafford uh, this summer. So Mario Lamina um, is 25 uh, years um, of age. Um, he's a Gabonese um, international. Obviously, he's had two years um, of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League because he has been um, at Southampton um, a couple of seasons. Um, he has been mainly um, out of favour with Southampton, you know, reflecting um, on the amount of injuries um, he has sustained, um, especially uh, last season. I think for Southampton. Um, in all competitions, um, I think he's played uh, 52 games. Um, obviously, you know, 46 of those um, appearances um, have, of course, uh, come um, in the Premier League. And of course, he has got three years uh, left um, on his contract uh, with Southampton. Um, obviously, you know, he didn't. Um, uh Mario Lamina did not travel uh, with, the uh, with the rest of Southampton's uh, squad you know, for their pre-season uh, trip uh, to Austria. So I think he's indicated out, um, of course, that he wants to leave Southampton, but he does, um, of course, uh, want to remain um, in England, um, as he has uh, currently uh, confirmed, like I said, um, he wants to uh, rejuvenate um, his career um, and all that. Um, like I said, he's primarily um, a central uh, midfielder, so he is mainly um, a box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder. Um, his versatility is um, also very, very good because he can play in uh, various um, other positions or has played in various um, other positions uh, when he was younger. He's been deployed as a winner. He's also played as a full-back. I think he's also played him um, as a wing-back. And I think during um, his time uh, with Marcelino, you know, he played him um, as a centre-back. So the player um, is very versatile, but he is mainly a box-to-box -box midfielder. I do presume he's uh, good at breaking up the play. I think he's uh, very, very um, energetic, um, is Mario uh, Lamina. But Manchester United um, have been in for him um, in the last uh, couple of uh, days. Um, I do believe he's also played alongside Paul Popper. Um, obviously, you no know, during um, his time uh, when he was um, at Juventus um, and all that. But I think Southampton have confirmed you know, they are open to selling uh, the player. But I think you know Southampton want to recruit you know the initial 18 million pounds that they did pay from, uh, from Juventus um, a couple of years ago so he is um, available uh, for um, reasonable uh, figure um, and all that I don't know if he would be the uh, right type of signing for Manchester United I probably believe um, he would be more um, of an Arsenal type signing to be quite honest you know with uh, Mario uh, Lamina um, and all that uh, but like I said Arsenal have got a tight budget this summer you know they've only got around what 40 or 45 million pounds to spend like I said Leicester have inquired about his services obviously Leicester so far uh, this summer have uh, got uh, three players um, on the board um Obviously, you know, they signed Yari Tillemans for £40 million. Pounds. Obviously, Leicester's most um, expensive signing. Um, obviously, they got uh, James uh, Justin from Luton. And, of course, uh, they did uh, get uh, Perez uh, from Newcastle. So, it has confirmed that Leicester um, are in there uh, for uh, Mario uh, Lamina um, and all that. But, like I said, when he was younger, um, he did uh, begin his uh, career um, in France. I think he began his career with Laurent. He then had a couple of years uh, with Marcella. Then, obviously, went to Turin and had, and had um, a couple of uh, years uh, with Juventus um, and all that. So, do you believe um, it would be uh, the right uh, solution uh, for Manchester United? And he has still got a hell of a lot of... Uh, development uh, minimum and like I said um, £18 million pounds, um, is a reasonable uh, figure and you know quite a few people have indicated out you know that we should be uh, sensible uh, of our recruitment uh, this summer but he's confirmed he wants to leave Southampton and he's confirmed uh, you know he's confirmed he wants to leave Southampton but he, of course uh, he wants to uh, remain um, in England um, as he has uh, currently uh, confirmed but like I said primarily um, a box to box uh, midfield because we do need to add uh, reinforcements um, of course um, in our midfield um, obviously you know so far uh, this summer you know we have spent um, around uh, £65 million pounds, um, on two players obviously on Daniel James and then Wan Bissaka, but obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to want to build on this, and of course he's going to want to bring at least uh, three more new um, additions uh, to the squad. And now I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's priorities, you know, will be to recommend a centre half in, and he'll also, you know, want to uh, add uh, reinforcements um, in that midfield. And I think regardless of what happens with Paul Pobbe, I know it's looking very likely anywhere that Paul Pobbe is going to be leaving. I still think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is orchestrating on, you know, bringing uh, two uh, new um, additions um, in that midfield. So there is still uh, lots uh, to address um, in the squad. Like I said, if Lukaku leaves the club, obviously we're going to need a replacement. 
Brentford in. Um, obviously, you know, we definitely need um, a central defender, someone that can go um, alongside uh, Victor uh, Lindelof. Um, but since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival, you know, we have seen Valencia leave, um, obviously, after he served uh, 10 years there uh, with Manchester United. Obviously, you know, we've seen Ander Herrera uh, leave um, on a free transfer, so obviously we're going to need a replacement for him. And obviously, you know, we have uh, seen uh, Mario Fellaini leave, and he obviously, you know, left uh, back um, in the January uh, transfer window. But um, I think... Um, there's only around uh, four weeks uh, remaining um, the transfer window, so we have got to be uh, more competitive um, in this uh, summer uh, transfer window. Obviously, as you all know, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer has worked out his transfer strategy for this summer. Obviously, you know, he wants to develop a squad um, of young, hungry, homegrown talents, and I think Oli Gunnar Solskjaer believes um, he's following a policy that proved successful um, under Alex Ferguson. and Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's policy, of course, um, is getting uh, the pursuit um, of young players um, and all that. Uh, but yeah, there's still, uh, needs to, there needs to be, uh, there's still lots to address um, in the squad. You know, We do uh, need to uh, revitalise uh, the squad um, and all that. Like I did say the other week I was hopeful Manchester United you know could get her uh, two signings um, on the board obviously my hopes um, had gone out of the window before and actually before we did go on pre-season uh, tour um, in Australia Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did suggest out he wanted Manchester United to get um, at least uh, one more uh, signing um, on the board so obviously you know he's hopes have, have of course uh, gone um, out of the window but I do believe you know we have been mainly focusing um, on the incomings uh, throughout where uh, the course of this window uh, so far should I say the entirety of the window but we've also got to um, offload uh, players you know, to help us generate funds and of course uh, rebuild uh, the squad reports with to that about three weeks ago saying that reportedly you know we'd only been giving them um, around um, £100 million pounds to spend it provided a reason why it said we'd only been given £100 million pounds to spend because obviously you know we're not in a Champions League uh, football uh, for next season and um like I said, it's going to be hard for us to attract players to elite level because obviously, you know, we're not in a Champions League uh, footballer for next season. And Champions League football, um, of, of course, um, is always very pivotal uh, when you do uh, want to get your number one targets. It's also going to be hard for us to convince um, our imperative players uh, to stay at the football club because we're not in a Champions League uh, footballer uh, for uh, next season um, and all that. Um, but like I said, you know, there's been quite a lot of British players um, on our um, agenda because obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit British uh, talent uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer. But I do believe we are moving away from the policy of signing uh, them when well, um, established players because obviously you know we've got a history of spending big on players uh, a lot of money has been invested into the club um, over the years since Alex Ferguson retired obviously we've had different managers with different philosophies obviously we've been a toxic club uh, for the last uh, five um, or six years and the main factor reason why we have been a toxic club because obviously you know we've been mismanaged obviously you know this is why uh, we've been um, underachieving um, and all that um, but obviously like I said I think Solskjaer has definitely got to meet expectation levels going on into this season I do believe our expectations probably going on going on into this season probably will be to you know finish in the top four and all that, maybe win um, the Europa League or maybe win the Carabao Cup. But I don't think our expectations going on into this season you know, will be to win the league or chance for the league because I think you know we have um, at least um, a couple of years um, off doing this. But obviously, uh, our expectations are now to get us back, you know, to being a competitive elite level football club and get us back, you know, to be you know winning uh, trophies um, and all that. But I think it is going to take us a couple of years, you know, to get us back to the team of how you know we uh, currently uh, were because obviously, you know, there is a uh, lot uh, to address um, in the squad um, and all that. Um, but I do believe in the next couple of scenes, um, our aspirations, you know, will be at that top four. Because obviously, analysing at the moment, you know, City strides ahead of us. Obviously, Liverpool um, strides um, ahead of us. I don't think City have spent any money yet uh, this summer. Um, obviously, you know, Liverpool um, have invested in the last couple of windows. They have. I don't think they have spent out uh, this summer um, and all that. Um, I think Arsenal. I think I've got one or two players um, on the board um, and all that. But like I said, they've uh, got um, a tight budget. Obviously, it's going to be hard for them to have a competitive window because they're not in Champions League uh, football uh, for their next season. Chelsea obviously can't uh, do any transfer activity in the next couple of windows because obviously you know they've got a transfer ban obviously Chelsea have um, just uh, lost um, Eden and Hazard so obviously you know Chelsea uh, can't get them um, and they couldn't have a replacement uh, for um, Eden Hazard um, and all that um, <clears throat> but like I said we've got to get the right players to Manchester United this summer because obviously we didn't spend out in January obviously you know we didn't uh, get as a uh, number one uh, target uh, last summer and obviously reflecting back last summer our priority um, of course uh, was to uh, recommend um, a central uh, defender to come in so we haven't been competitive enough um, in the last uh, couple of uh, windows uh, but I do believe you know Daniel James is a good sign for Manchester United. Um, I also think Anwan Bissaka is a great, great sign, and I do believe Anwan Bissaka, you know, can be uh, become our fullback for the next uh, decade. And I do believe Anwan Bissaka has got all, uh, you know, his defensive capabilities is good, but I think he's got all the ingredients required, you know, to become um, a huge uh, success um, at Manchester United. And obviously, Anwan Bissaka is going to be our first choice right back going on into this season, which is a uh, very, very good. He's going to be, he's a good replacement for Antonio Valencia with Daniel James. Um, like I said, I'm skeptical about him getting into the first team because I don't know if he'll get 
get, you know, assured to get in, assured first team football, you know, week in, week out. I am a bit sceptical about that. But obviously, you know, we've got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, and obviously, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, will give everybody uh, the chance um, and all that, like he did. We're thinking back when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager, you know, when he first came in. He did basically say he was, at that time, you know, he was going to give everybody the chance, um, and he did. So he was going to give the fringe players a chance, the young players um, a chance, um, and all that. And I think he'll do the same, you know, with, with uh, how it currently is uh, now. So everyone has the, you know, the right, you know, to uh, be, uh, get uh, giving him um, a chance. So Daniel James will definitely, uh, you definitely know, get giving him um, his opportunity. I do believe Manchester United probably know will put him on the left hand side. We may put him on the right, but I think we'll put him on the left because that's where Daniel James, of course, um, is supposed to be more um, effective um, and all that. Um, but um, like I did currently say, you know, we definitely no need to uh, sell uh, players uh, this summer, you know, to help us generate funds um, and rebuild uh, the squad. But we've definitely got to address uh, that midfield because obviously, you know, in that midfield, we need a replacement for uh, Ando Herrera. Obviously, it's looking like uh, Paul Pobb is going. So obviously, you know, we're going to need um, a replacement uh, for him. Uh, Matic, he's getting no younger. He's aging up. He's too inconsistent. He's too slow. You know, we've got Scott Montominway, but he's too um, um, inexperienced um, at the moment. And I'm still not sure of him if Scott Montominway is, you know, the long term solution for Manchester United. United, you know, say I've got the same, uh, I've got the same uh, thoughts um, about Fred. I don't know if he's uh, the long-term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. I think Fred is probably more mobile than the Man United, and I know Fred proved himself, you know, to, uh, towards uh, the back end um, of last season. But I think Fred, you know, to be quite honest with you, I don't know if he's the long-term uh, solution. And we did pay fifty million pounds for him. Obviously, he's uh, more, one of our uh, most um, expensive uh, signings. But like I said, he hasn't got a fantastic pedigree. He was a good player um, at Shakhtar and S, but he hasn't really uh, replicated uh, this form at Manchester United. But under the Jose Mourinho era. You know, let's be honest, you know, Fred uh, didn't uh, really uh, get uh, the opportunity. So we have got quite a few fringe players. Obviously, the fringe players are Andres Pereira. Obviously, he's just signed um, a new deal. Obviously, you know, Scott Montumway, obviously, you know, is um, one of um, our fringe uh, players. Um, obviously, I think he signed in a long-term uh, contract uh, last season. Um, obviously, um, you know, uh, Fred um, is one of um, our fringe players um, and all that. So we have got uh, quite um, a few uh, fringe players um, in the squad um, and all that. I do I, I do believe Matic should not be at Manchester United going on into this season um, and all that. But obviously we do know he's going to be uh, staying um, at the football club. But we do know mainly Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first choice midfield trio. Um, what obviously, you know, last season was obviously Herrera, Matic um, and Pogba. But obviously reflecting back last season, you know, he had to rotate that uh, quite um, a few times, you know, reflecting on the amount of um, injuries, you know, we had uh, currently uh, sustained uh, last season um, and all that. But obviously, you know, we need to add creativeness in that midfield because obviously you know about Paul Pobber there you know we're lacking creativeness um, in that uh, midfield um, obviously you know we're lacking goals um, in that, uh, from that uh, midfield so we have definitely you know, got to uh, get um, a replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pobber and I do believe you know Bruno Fernandes um, is the right player you know to replace uh, Paul Pobber um, at Manchester United and and I was as I was uh, reading uh, the Daily um, Express uh, yesterday you know they basically said you know the situation regarding Paul Pobber could be delaying Bruno Fernandes uh, transfer uh, to Manchester United but I basically said of what happens with Paul Pobber it's got nothing Nothing to do with Bruno Fernandes coming out to Manchester United um, and that. So I don't think Bruno Fernandes' move to Manchester United um, is dependent on what happens there uh, with Paul Pogba because obviously you know, we do want to get a uh, deal uh, concluded uh, for Bruno Fernandes. Obviously, as it did uh, get uh, confirmed uh, today um, about uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes, um, obviously you know, he didn't play um, in Sporting Lisbon's uh, pre-season friendly uh, today because obviously you know, he'd been uh, pulled out um, and all that um, over his uh, potential uh, move uh, to Old Trafford. It has confirmed that Bruno Fernandes um, has met up, uh, met up uh, with his agent and had a uh, negotiation with his agent um, over the, uh, you know, discussing about a um, potential uh, move uh, to Manchester United um, and all that because I do believe you know we are considered the favourites to get, get a deal over the line uh, for Bruno Fernandes' uh, signature but I think we've been considered the favourites to sign Bruno Fernandes uh, at least uh, for the last what four to five weeks uh, maybe um, even longer than that we know we have uh, been uh, considered uh, the favourites um, Obviously, reports are reflected out uh, last uh, reflected out uh, last week. Sent out report, you know, Bruno Fernandes' um, agent had allegedly travelled uh, to the UK to allegedly, you know, thrash out um, a deal uh, with Manchester United. And it also uh, reportedly uh, said that he'd also held talks with Tottenham. I think he's uh, also held uh, talks uh, with Liverpool because obviously, you know, Liverpool and Tottenham have also um, inquired um, about uh, Bruno Fernandes' uh, services. He did not literally say, you know, they dropped out of the race, though, Tottenham and Liverpool. And he did basically say, you know, we, we was the only team um, in the running uh, to uh, sign uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes. But I do believe according to reports what they said uh, the other week he did say no we have agreed uh, personal terms it also said that Bruno Fernandes has agreed uh, a contract with around um, 100, uh, grand, 100 uh, grand um, a week um, and all that so Manchester United have reached an agreement uh, with Spartan Lisbon but obviously you know, no fee um, has yet you know, come to um, an agreement so the fee seems to be the stumbling block um, at the moment of, make, of Bruno Fernandes making his proposed uh, move uh, to Manchester United obviously Sport, I think the Spartan Lisbon president you know, did uh, confirm that Spartan Lisbon you know, will offload him uh, for around uh, 53 uh, million 
£50,000. So Sporting Lisbon have blatantly made it clear, you know, they do want him over a £50 million pounds for him his services. He did say Manchester United only want to pay him around £32 million pounds for him his services. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, he's been linked to a move to Manchester United for the entirety of this window. And obviously the transfer saga does continue to persist then by Bruno Fernandes. Obviously Bruno Fernandes last summer uh, did sign him a five-year contract with Sporting Lisbon. So he is under contract with them till 2023. His initial release clause um, is around their £88 million. Pounds. But obviously Manchester United are not determined you know, determined to go anywhere near uh, this figure because we want to get him for, us, uh, uh, <coughs> for the fee as low um, as we possibly can. So we do want to get him uh, £32 million. Pounds, but obviously... <coughs> Um, Sporting Lisbon, you know, will um, offload uh, Bruno Fernandes for £32 million. Pounds. But Sporting Lisbon, uh, sorry, Bruno Fernandes uh, coming out to Manchester United, I think he'll rejuvenate the team, you know, bring his, uh, them goals uh, that we do need. He'll also um, have depth um, in our midfield. And Bruno Fernandes coming to the Premier League, like I said, I think he'll succeed. I think he's got all the attributes to succeed. And I think, I do believe um, he will um, exceed um, expectation levels. Last season for Sporting Lisbon, um, he scored uh, 31 goals um, in all competitions, I think in around, what, 50 uh, games. So his stats are um, very, very um, impressive. He can also create uh, chances only 24 years of age so I've still got a hell of a lot of uh, development uh, in him but I think his preference um, is actually not um, a move uh, to Manchester United so he's keen on making a move uh, to the club um but Bruno Fernandes did spend the majority of his career um, in Italy when he was younger, you know, with the likes of Sam Bandari um, and Undenis um, and all that. I think he actually, you know, uh, also uh, played uh, for Avria. But Sporting Lisbon president, Sporting Lisbon's president, uh, did confirm uh, last week. This was coming from Sky Sports that there has been talks, you know, um, with Bruno Fernandes um, if in uh, regards uh, to his future. So obviously, you know, Bruno Fernandes does want to rejuvenate his career. Um, look, reflecting back around six or seven weeks ago, it was looking likely Manchester City uh, were going to get a deal concluded for Bruno Fernandes. But um, obviously, you know, as it did uh, confirm. Firm, you know, Manchester City um, had withdrawn uh, their uh, current um, interest um, and all that. Um, but I think it did say last week as well that Bruno Fernandes uh, was seduced uh, by our latest um, offer because it did say reportedly we offered him a contract uh, uh, worth up to around what uh, between worth up to between 4.5 million to 5.3 million a season. I think Bruno Fernandes uh, was uh, seduced uh, by uh, this offer. So I do believe he's keen on making a move uh, to Manchester United um, and all that. I think he's primarily um, an attacking uh, midfielder and I do believe you know he will be um, a good uh, replacement uh, for. Uh, Paul Popper um like as I've, as I've been updating you um, on a regular basis, um, Vim uh, regards uh, to Sean Longstaff uh, from Newcastle. Obviously, you know, he's been um, on Manchester United's um, agenda. Obviously, you know, he's been subjected uh, to quite um, a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation. Uh, we do know Manchester United um, are in there for him. Uh, they actually you know could be a change in the scenery now, uh, you know, going in there uh, for uh, Sean Longstaff. Obviously, reports came out, was it earlier on uh, this week or last week, as I did update you on, saying that reportedly, you know, Newcastle have indicated out that Sean Longstaff um, is not uh, for sale. Uh, but they did, you know, they did say, you know, the would. Um, well, the, the, they were only willing to sell him uh, for around uh, fifty uh, million pounds, maybe thirty million pounds. You know, maybe enough, you know, to convince uh, Newcastle uh, to offload him. Because I think it did say, you know, we are willing to put around um, thirty uh, million pound bidding for him, and I think that's a reasonable figure in this market at this day and age. But I'd say of the thirty million pound mark, you know, Newcastle are blatantly not asking her for too much. Because I think Newcastle are um, reluctant to um, offload him. Because I do believe Newcastle know how much um, of an imperative uh, player um, he is. Um, obviously, Sean Longstaff um, began his career uh, with Newcastle. Um, obviously, you know, last season. Season was his first season um, in his senior squad over Newcastle. Um Obviously, you now reflecting back uh, last year, um, he had uh, made um, his senior debut uh, for Newcastle. Um, I think he signed a four-year contract, so he is under contract uh, with Newcastle um, until 2022. I think he played around 13 games um, under Rafa Benitez's uh, guidance last season. I think you know he did flourish um, under Rafa Benitez's uh, guidance. And obviously, when Rafa Benitez was at Newcastle, I think Sean Longstaff uh, was keen on staying out uh, with Newcastle. He was keen on continuing continuing um, his developing process um, at Newcastle. But obviously, there may have been a been a change of scenery now. Sean Longstaff. Staff may want to leave Newcastle, you know, following the uh, departure of Rafael Benitez. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has instructed Manchester United, you know, to get a transfer prioritized prioritised there for uh, Sean uh, Longstaff. But he is um, only at uh, 21 uh, years of age. Um, I still believe that Sean Longstaff um, is regaining uh, full fitness. Obviously, you know, Sean Longstaff had suffered um, uh, an e-ligament injury back um, in March. So obviously, you know, didn't play the last couple of months um, of last season due to this knee ligament injury he had uh, sustained. And I still believe um, he's uh, recovering uh, from this um, injury uh, now. Um, 
Uh, I do believe if he came to Manchester United, you know, he would he, do, he would have all the ingredients required, you know, to become a huge successor at Manchester United. I think he's technically a very good footballer, you know, he can score goals. I think he can also uh, create him and all that. Of what I've basically you know watched him is he's a young player, but he has still got a hell of a lot of uh, development in him. I do believe him um, is primarily a central midfielder. Um, I think he also had a loan spell with Blackpool, if I'm right. I think he also had a loan spell with a uh, new uh, with a uh, was it Kilmarnock um, and all that. Um, but like I said, um, only had 21 uh, years of age. Um, is Sean Longstaff. Um, but yeah, Solskjaer you know, wants to uh, get a deal over the line for him. Initially, he's valued from between 25 to 30 million pounds. This is what um, a Newcastle, of course, are currently uh, waiting at, rating at um, and all that. But um, hopefully, you know, we can uh, get um, a deal uh, concluded uh, for him. Um, But um, like I did say, you know, there has uh, been uh, so many uh, midfielders um, on our uh, current um, agenda um, and all that. Uh, but hopefully, you know, I'm still very, very convinced, you know, we can uh, get uh, the deal um, over the line uh, for uh, Bruno Fernandes, uh, like he uh, currently um, said. Um, he obviously, Yari Tillemans is now out of the equation because obviously, you know, he's gone to uh, Leicester. Obviously, you know, he was, on, he was also, you know, on uh, Manchester United's agenda, you know, was uh, Yari uh, Tillemans. I've already given you an update, haven't I, um, about uh, Mario Erlamina. Um, but yeah, there's been so many uh, midfielders, um, of course, um, on our uh, current um, agenda. Um... Um, obviously, you know, we do uh, need um, a central uh, defender, you know, that's also, you know, uh, very, very um, imperative um, indeed um, and all that. Um, but like I said, you know, who should, you know, replace Paul Pogba at the football club? And, you know, there has been a lot of talks going on, at least in the last couple of days, um, of in regards uh, to Serge uh, Milkovic, uh, Savic um, and all that, from Lazio. It reportedly speculated out with the media saying that we've identified, uh, uh, you know, Serge Milinkovic, Savic um, as our number one target uh, to replace uh, Paul Pogba. Um, he's 25 uh, years of age, um, he's a uh, Serbian, but I do believe he's going to cost him um, a substantial um, amount um, of money because it did say a couple of days ago that Lazio wants somewhere in the region um, around um, 100 uh, eight uh, million pounds. I think he's technically a good footballer. I think his work ethic's good. I think his um, technical ability um, and that's a uh, really really good. Obviously, hasn't played um, in the Premier League um, as yet. But obviously, Serge Milkovic Savage has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him because he is um, only twenty four years of age. Obviously, has had a lot of experience under his belt in Italy because he has served four years um, in Italy uh, with Lazio. I think he's played over one hundred and fifty uh, games uh, for them. Like I said, still in the contract with Lazio um, until two thousand twenty three. I think he's also a former Genka player. Um, I think he. Did say Manchester United um, have been in negotiations uh, with his agent uh, on all that over getting um, a deal concluded. I think it did allegedly say that Manchester United had reached an agreement uh, with Lazio because I think it did say you know we'd put a bid in for him around uh, £67 million. Pounds. Um, but I think, yeah, his agent's in negotiation with Manchester United because I think his agent um, had travelled uh, to the UK uh, throughout uh, the course of the weekend. So do you think he would be uh, the right uh, solution uh, to replace uh, Paul Pogba at the football club? But I think he's been linked to a move to Manchester United now uh, for like um, a year now. So he has been relentlessly linked to a move uh, to the club. I think he was valued at around £120 million uh, last summer. But he can score goals, he can create, as he's proven um, in his four-year uh, period um, in Italy you know, uh, with Lazio. So do you think he would be the right solution for Manchester United? Um, obviously, there's been a lot talks about Saul Nagias from Atletico Madrid he's also 24 years of age um, I think again he's going to cost um, a substantial um, amount um, of money um, as Saul Nagias because he has got a release clause in his contract of Atletico Madrid of around um, £135 million and I think Atletico Madrid now are much of an imperative player is and they are reluctant uh, to offload him um, I think basically you know, they probably would consider offloading if Manchester United you know, were to trigger um, his current uh, release clause um, obviously he's got a long, long contract of Atletico Madrid obviously he signed um, a nine year deal um, a couple of years ago, I think he's still got about seven years there remaining on that. I think it's, I'm very sceptical, I think it's, and well, I'm very sceptical that, you know, that uh, Saul Nagez, you know, will say, see the seven years uh, remaining um, on his contract, because I think in seven years' time, he probably would have moved on uh, from Atletico Madrid, because I don't feel, I think he'll be intending on spending the rest of um, his, his uh, career with Atletico Madrid, but like I said, he's only a 25 uh, years of age um, and all that. He can play as a central um, or a defensive uh, midfielder. Obviously, he has spent the entirety or the majority of his career so far with Atletico Madrid, graduate from their youth system and I think he's gone on to make like um, over 200 odd um, appearances uh, for Atletico Madrid but he can play as a central like I said um, or a defensive uh, midfielder so do you think he would be um, a good uh, replacement for Paul Pogba I do believe Manchester United um, have touched base uh, with his representatives um, over the possible move to Old Trafford also um, City um, have also inquired um, about um, his services um, in the past so 
you know, do you think he would be um, a good uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba? But basically, you know, if we do sell Pogba, if we do sell Lukaku, you know, I think that will help us with our rebuilding process. It'll also help, with, help us with our transition. And I do believe, you know, we can generate around, what, £200 million pounds over the departures um, of Pogba um, and Lukaku um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know, we have put huge, hefty, we have put hefty price tags um, on Lukaku um, and Paul Pogba um, and all that. So we have put huge transfer fees on them. So this is the uh, stumbling block at the moment, you know, of Pogba making his proposed move to Madrid or Juventus and it's also the stumbling block at the moment of Lukaku making them his move to Inter Milan you know based on the huge fees that we have put on the duo uh, with Diamond and Rojo I think we also need to get rid of them because they're two problematic players at Manchester United and obviously you know they've both enjoyed difficult times at Manchester United and with Diamond and Rojo I think you know we can generate around what 25 or 30 million pounds for their current departures and all that Um but as I did uh, currently um, say, yes, so there has been a lot of uh, midfielders, um, of course, um, on our uh, current um, agenda. Um, I do believe probably um, our third signing uh, this summer, though, is probably you know, going to be Harry Maguire uh, from Leicester, um, according uh, to uh, recent uh, reports. Now, obviously, you know, we do need to uh, recommend um, a central uh, defender uh, to come in because we have got issues uh, defensively. Obviously, you know, that was uh, proven uh, last season because last season we conceded 54 goals um, in the Premier League in 38 Premier League games. Obviously, our highest total, um, of course, um, in nearly 40 years, or was it uh, 48 years? So that just proves uh, the issues uh, that we've got uh, defensively. And, um, you know, we haven't had a world-class central defender, you know, since we had the likes of Vidic and, of course, uh, since uh, we had uh, the likes um, of Ferdinand um, and all that. And they were a fantastic partnership back um, under the Alex Ferguson and Moreira. But I think, you know, we need to get um, a world-class uh, central uh, defender. And the vast majority of Manchester United fans have probably said, you know, we need uh, two uh, central defenders. But we do need someone that can go alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line. But I do believe now Manchester United are in pole position uh, to sign uh, Harry Maguire. Of obviously, now they've been updating you on a regular basis. And obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has identified Harry Maguire as um, his uh, number one uh, defensive uh, target um, and all that because reports uh, came out uh, last week saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, had asked the British uh, players um, in our squad you know about their thoughts about Harry Maguire and obviously you know, every one of them you know, give uh, positive uh, remarks uh, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer about Harry Maguire so I do believe now we're going to step up step up um, our interest um, in a player obviously you know, Phelan is instructing Manchester United to get a deal uh, completed for him obviously you know, Phelan um, is keen um, on me you were uh, nighting uh, with the player because Harry Maguire you know, did play under Mike Phelan's guidance when he was at Hull but Mike Phelan um, Mike feeling um, on the other short uh, tenure with Hull City um, and all that. But um, obviously, it reported out saying that we, um, uh, well, this came from Sky Sports, I think it was uh, last week, saying that reportedly, you know, we'd offered £70 million. Pounds. Um, obviously, you know, this was too insufficient uh, for Leicester because obviously, you know, Leicester are looking for somewhere in the region of around their £85 million. Pounds. So obviously, you know, it's going to take a world record for, uh, for the defender to convince uh, Leicester uh, to currently um, offload him. I think it also mentioned in the mirror, was it, if I'm right, that Manchester United offered £70 million, pounds, you know, plus we'd offered uh, Marcus Rojo um, in our bid to sign uh, Harry Maguire, but Leicester uh, were not. not um, interested um, in this offer, you know, Leicester are only willing to um, offload him on a straight uh, cash uh, payment, so they don't want any uh, swap deals um, and that um, involved. Sky Sports also indicated outside that both Manchester clubs um, have been in talks uh, with Le Leicester uh, for several weeks um, and all that, but obviously no deal or no fee has yet, you know, come to um, any kind um, of agreement. Obviously, reflecting back a couple of weeks ago, you know, it was looking very likely that Manchester City uh, were going to get Harry Maguire. did say City were set to sign him for a world record fee of £80 million, and it also said that City orchestrated his salary and it said City were going to pay him around uh, 280 uh, grand um, a week um, and all that. Um, but obviously, you know, and I think Cal Maguire's preference uh, was um, a move uh, to Manchester City. But obviously, you know, City were seeing him um, as a replacement uh, for uh, Vincent uh, Company because obviously, you know, Vincent Company uh, left uh, Manchester City, um, of course, um, after um, 11 uh, years. Um, but now City um, have dropped uh, their interest because obviously no City um, are not willing to meet uh, what Leicester um, of course um, are uh, demanding so they have now dropped their interest so I do believe it's Manchester United now um, only um, in the running and I do I think Leicester do believe that you know we will meet what they um, are currently uh, demanding um, and all that uh, but yeah I think he's um, a very very um, good uh, central defender uh, like uh, currently um, said um, and we have identified him now as our uh, number one uh, defensive uh, target. Like I said, he's going to cost around £85 million. But looking at it, ultimately, you know, Leicester don't want to sell Harry Maguire. And this is the main factor reason why they've priced him out of the transfer market. This is why, of course, they are demanding um, an extortionate um, amount. Because Leicester, of course, uh, don't want to work currently um, offload him. But um, like I said, um, very, very good player. Holds his line really, really well. Very good in the eyes. Tenacity, and that's uh, really, really good. Isn't really fast, Harry Maguire, but I don't think uh, that's um, a concern. He's proven in the Premier League. And I do believe, you know, he will blend in uh, 
um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line, you know, uh, fantastically uh, well. Um, obviously, he's been at Leicester a couple of seasons. I think he's made 76 um, appearances uh, for Leicester um, in all competitions. Um, obviously, you know, signed a new long-term contract with them uh, last summer um, until 2023. And Leicester did get him from Hull City uh, for around uh, £17 million pounds, um, a couple of uh, years ago um, and all that. Uh, but I think Harry Maguire has indicated how, you know, he does uh, want to uh, go to uh, one of the uh, top six uh, clubs, um, and all that, obviously, to rejuvenate his career and take um, his football in her career to the next level, plus um, he's British. But I think Harry Maguire um, is regarded um, as one of the best uh, central defenders in the Premier League. Um, I wouldn't put him in Virgil van Dijk's calibre um, or level, but I do believe you know, he would be uh, the right uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. But obviously, reflecting back last summer, like I said, our priority you know, was to recommend um, a central uh, defender uh, to come in. But obviously, reflecting back under the Jose uh, Mourinho uh, Marrera, uh, last summer, you know... Uh, you know, uh, we didn't get as number one targets because obviously, you know, the board, you know, uh, back in the signings that Jose Mourinho wanted to recommend in, he had bad disputes with the players, he had bad disputes with the board, and this is a couple of main factor reasons why it didn't work out under Jose Mourinho. But one of the players Jose Mourinho wanted last summer was Harry Maguire, and obviously, you know, the rumours have continued to persist linking Harry Maguire uh, with a move to Manchester United since uh, that point. But I think Harry, Leicester were asking for around uh, 70 odd million pounds uh, last summer, but we have got to uh, get him um, a central defender in. I know some Manchester United fans have basically said, you know, it's more. Essential that we get some midfielders in and the right winner, so they believe that their areas are more, uh, you know, are more um, imperative than getting them um, a central uh, defender to come in. But we have definitely you not know, got to uh, get them um, a central defender in. But him alongside Victor Lindelof um, in our back line, you know, would be uh, fantastic because we're Lind with Lindelof. I think you know we've definitely got to keep him um, at Manchester United because he's definitely a long-term solution uh, for Manchester United. Obviously, you know, we got him a couple of years ago from Benfica for around was it thirty-one million pounds. Um, in his first season, you know, Lindelof didn't really settle in him and all that, and he struggled for consistency. But I think in his second season, Lindelof, you know, really stepped up to the plate. His performances and that, you know, were really, really good. His distribution were good. You know, he was uh, showing that ability, you know, that he can't uh, play out from the back. And I do believe Lindelof will develop and, you know, will flourish um, in his Manchester United team uh, without um, a shadow of a doubt. But we need someone that can complement him. And like I said, you know, quite a few people have said, you know, we need two central defenders because obviously we know the likes of Small isn't good enough. Obviously, you know, Phil Jones um, and that's uh, not uh, good enough. Obviously, Small. Smalling and Jones um, have been two long-serving uh, players um, at the club. Obviously, you know, Smalling um, has been here nine years. Obviously, you know, Phil Jones and that has uh, been here um, eight years. But they're too inconsistent now with Smalling um, and Jones. And, you know, it was bad business for Manchester United, like I said, you know, giving them two uh, new long-term uh, contracts. Um, we've got Eric Bay, and some people said, you know, Eric Bay is still an imperative player for Manchester United. I think he is a very imperative player because I think Eric Bay is highly rated. He's a good uh, central uh, defender. But I think Eric Bay's career has been mainly affected at Manchester United, you know, reflecting on the amount of injuries he's sustained. Obviously, with his uh, fallout um, under managers, obviously, he has been here uh, since 2016. He was actually one of Jose Mourinho's first signings. You know, we paid £30 million for him. Maybe Manchester United would be open to selling him, but I think we probably you know, would look to recruit the initial, what, £30 million that we did pay for him uh, from Villarreal uh, back in uh, 2016. But like I said, I think we need um, at least uh, one central defender. I would say Matty Stillett now is probably nearly out of the equation because I think he's going to be going to Juventus, like I've updated you about him. I updated you about what was going on with Dillett, didn't I, um, earlier on uh, this week. I think Cullen Bile is probably out of the equation because I think Napoli are more reluctant to sell him. Um there's still some people, you know, talking about uh, Toby Armada Weirald uh, from Tottenham. Um, and, you know, looking at it from a financial point of view, you know, Toby Armada Weirald um, is available uh, for um, Rees Belair figure. He's, all, he's, all, he's, he's available for £25 million pounds this summer. So, analysing it, Toby Armada is going to substantially cost us a lot less than Harry Maguire. He's going to cost us a hell of a lot less than Colour from Napoli um, and all that, and a lot less than Issa Diopper from West Ham. But I just don't think it's in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plan, you know, to recommend uh, Toby Armada Weirald um, in. I still think it'd be a great upgrade um, in our defence of what we've currently got. Um, at the moment because he's proven in the Premier League and he has proven in his four years uh, with Tottenham you know like he can hold his line and that but I've got strong reservations about him now you know he's aging up his hard way well um, he has uh, lost uh, that yard um, of pace and his release cost is around what £25 uh, million pounds, uh, this summer um, his uh, Toby um, hard uh, Marierelds um but like I said, he has refused uh, to sign a new contract with Tottenham, so it is looking very likely, you know, he is, you know, currently uh, going to be uh, leaving. Uh, but like I said, there's been so many centre-halves on our agenda. Obviously, you know, Issy Diop, you know, we are set to, um, well, we've stepped up our interest um, in Issy Diop because, you know, we have been in for Issy Diop um, at least um, in the last uh, couple of uh, weeks. Um, obviously, you know, Issy Diop is 22 years of age. Again, very good in the air, so that's very beneficial. And I do believe he is one of um, our priority uh, targets. I think Issy Diop would uh, be a cheaper solution than uh, Harry uh, Maguire. Um, but Issy Diop, has had a year of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League. Obviously, last season was his debut season in the Premier League uh, with West Ham. Obviously, 
did last season. I think he played around 33 games in the Premier League. 30, I think he made 38 um, appearances um, in all competitions. Um, obviously, you know, West Ham got him last summer from Toulouse for around uh, £22 uh, million. Uh, pounds. He's got four years left um, on his contract uh, with West Ham, but only 22 uh, years of age. Um, obviously, it allegedly said last month that we'd reportedly offered West Ham a player plus cash offer. So he did reportedly say, you know, we'd offered around £45 million. Pounds. It said, we, you know, we reportedly um, included uh, Phil Jones um, as part of the deal. But obviously, West Ham didn't entertain his offer and West Ham instantly, uh, you know, currently uh, turned uh, this down. Um, it did say, uh, I think it was earlier on this week, or was it last week, if I can remember, saying that we were set to put our first formal offering for him. And it did say we was willing to offer around £45 million for him. But I do believe West Ham, are, if they are willing to sell him, I think they don't want to sell him. But if they are, if they are willing to do any business with a player, I think they do want in the excess of around uh, £60 million. Pounds. So do you believe you see a Diop, you know, would be the right uh, solution uh, for uh, Manchester United. But obviously, you know, we've just got to get someone that can uh, complement uh, Victor Lindelof, um, of course, um, in our uh, back line. Um, but yeah, like I said, so being so many uh, central uh, defenders um, on our uh, current um, agenda, but uh, like I said, you know, we have got to be more competitive in this window. Not only going to Solskjaer is looking to build the squad, you know, worthy um, of the club's uh, mystery um, and all that, uh, because we've got to get the right players into Manchester United, who, of course, we think is going to fit the culture of the club, who, of course, um, is going to uh, fit uh, the history of um, the club um, and all that. Um, but um, like I did uh, currently um, update you um, earlier on um, in regards uh, to Romelu Lukaku um, and all that, uh, big, big breaking news um, has been uh, coming out um, about um, him uh, today. Um, I think Lukaku um, has admitted you know, that he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, Manchester United uh, this summer. Um, obviously, we do know that Lukaku has been relentlessly uh, linked to a move uh, to Inter Milan and obviously the transfer saga does continue to persist um, about uh, Romelu Lukaku. Um, I've been reading the media today about it, like you updated on my last video, and it did say Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to, you know, kick to you know, Romelu Lukaku to remain at Manchester United uh, for uh, one more uh, season. Reports did reflect out earlier on uh, this week that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had held uh, talks uh, with Romelu Lukaku, uh, you know, pleading him, you know, to uh, stay uh, for uh, one more uh, season. But I think... Um But I think, you know, Lukaku wants to leave because I think Lukaku feels as though that he has been um, undermined, undermined uh, by um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, for the last uh, six months because obviously, you know, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been recommended in, obviously we do know that Marcus Rashford um, has been um, his first choice uh, preference, preference um, ahead of uh, Ramon Lukaku and obviously Lukaku is now a uh, service uh, to requirements um, at Manchester United um, and all that. Um, I think it did say that uh, Inter Milan's uh, uh, representatives um, are due, to, due um, in England uh, sometime uh, this week to allegedly, you know, thrash out um, a deal uh, with Manchester United uh, for uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku um, and all that. Uh, but like I said, you know, we've said, you know, we want around 75 or £80 uh, million pounds for him. And I think if we do offload him, you know, it will be uh, very, very good because I think we need to um, offload uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku. Um, obviously, you know, Inter Milan are trying to offload a couple of their players, you know, to help them generate funds, you know, to meet that uh, 75 or £80 million pound, uh, valuation um, and all that. Um, obviously, we're doing all Lukaku's agent um, had give us, an, um, uh, give us um, an update uh, the other week and he basically said, that Inter Milan are desperate to sign him, but he's classified the move as complicated at this present time because obviously, um, you know the you know the the price tag um, is we've put on Lukaku is actually you know problematic uh, for Inter Milan um, at this uh, current uh, present time. Obviously, Lukaku's agent um, has a uh, elder talks uh, with Inter Milan um, and all that uh, quite um, a few uh, times, but he said um, Inter Milan um, are desperate uh, to currently uh, sign him um, and all that. But basically, it allegedly said last month that Romelu Lukaku um, had agreed uh, the personal terms uh, with Inter Milan. It also said he had agreed a deal uh, with. Um, around them um, 180 grand a week um, and all that um, obviously Antonio Conte has identified him um, as his uh, number one uh, target um, um, Antonio Conte but um, reflecting back a couple of years ago Antonio Conte wanted uh, Romelu Lukaku at that point this is when he was Chelsea manager but obviously you know, he ended up making uh, the move uh, to Manchester United and um Obviously, Lukaku recently, you know, described uh, Antonio Conte um, as one of the uh, best uh, managers um, in the world, and obviously he's keen on playing um, under Antonio Conte's guidance because probably Lukaku believes he'll flourish um, under uh, Antonio Conte's uh, guidance um, and all that. Uh, so this is what you know, basically, Romelu Lukaku um, had uh, currently um, said. Uh, but like I said, um, Inter Milan um, have inquired um, about getting Romelu Lukaku um, on a two-year loan. Obviously, this got reported out from Sky Italy, was it a week um, or two ago? Saying they had, they had inquired about getting him on a two-year loan with then the obligation 
relegation to by at the end of the loan for around £60 million. Pounds. But obviously, now Manchester United uh, didn't uh, entertain uh, this offer and we're only willing to let Lukaku go um, on a permanent uh, deal. Obviously, you know, we're unwilling to accept swap deals that Inter Milan um, have offered us. Obviously, you know, Inter Milan have tried offering us Mario Cardi as part of the deal. They've also tried offering us uh, Ivan Perisic um, as part of the deal. But obviously, you now Manchester United, um, of course, um, haven't entertained um, any of these um, offers. So we've said we want around £75 or £80 million. Pounds. So basically, we're looking to recoup the money that we did pay for him in a couple of years ago because we did get him £75 million. Pounds. Obviously, there were several add-ons um, included in the, uh, included um, in the deal. Uh, fifty, I think there were add-ons were £15 million. Pounds. So it did rise the deal up to around uh, £90 million. Pounds. And of course, Lukaku has still got uh, three years uh, left um, on his contract term and all that. Um, but yeah, he has been relentlessly in all so moved to Inter Milan. Obviously, Lukaku's been at Manchester United, you know, uh, two years. Obviously, scored 42 goals in 96 games for the club um, in all competitions, um, which is uh, actually, you know, quite um, impressive. Obviously, Lukaku was exceptional um, in his first season with Manchester United, but obviously didn't really replicate that um, in his second season um, and all that. So, he has found himself uh, surplus uh, to uh, requirements. And I've got strong reservations about him, but I still think his ratio is good. Um, he's well Premier League proven. His pedigree and that's uh, very, very um, good um, in the Premier League. He has still got a lot of years ahead of him, you know, he's uh, 26 uh, years of age, but we do know he's been heavily linked to a move to Inter Milan, so reports did say today that Leca uh, that Inter representatives from Inter Milan are due to come to England to uh, hold more talks with Manchester United over getting a deal uh, thrashed out uh, for, uh, you know, Romelu Lukaku and all that, uh, but obviously the fee seems to be problematic uh, for Inter Milan um, at this uh, current, uh, present uh, time. But we're only willing to let him go um, on a permanent deal. And obviously, you know, there has been a number of players on our agenda, you know, who could actually, you know, replace uh, Romelu Lukaku um, at the football club. Because obviously, analysing it last season wasn't scoring enough goals. Obviously, you know, wasn't ruthless enough um, in that um, in front of goal. And obviously, you know, the likes of Rashford and Martial um, at this uh, moment in time are not reliable enough, you know, to deliver his them goals uh, that we do need. Because obviously, Rashford and Martial are still both young. You know, they haven't emulated uh, to that level um, as yet. It's going to take them a couple of years, you know, to uh, get them to that level where they do uh, currently uh, want to be um, and all that. Um, but like I did say, another problem with Manchester United, uh, well, it was a problem with Manchester United, you know, we did let far too many uh, players' uh, contracts uh, run down, but now we have uh, resolved, uh, you know, this uh, problem. Um, obviously, you know, it confirmed last week that we'll give Andres Pereira a new deal, like I said. We, we'll give Alex Tuanzebe a new deal. Um, obviously, you know, we give Marcus Rashford a new long-term contract last week, which was good news. Obviously, a couple of weeks ago, we'll give Juan Mata um, a new contract. Obviously, we're on the verge of getting uh, David De Gea um, and that um, a new contract, so this is a uh, very, very um, good news uh, indeed. Um... Like I did say, I watched um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, press conference uh, today. You know, he had quite, he had, well, some of his viewpoints uh, were quite um, interesting, um, if I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you. And like I said, uh, the interpretation of what I watched, of well, what I watched to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I know I currently um, say, and like I said, I do believe uh, Paul Pogba is going to be uh, leaving uh, the football club. Because in that press conference today, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I know, was peppered with questions about Paul Pogba. He was also asked questions, you know, about what um, Paul Pogba's agent, Mini Riley, you know, quoted out uh, last week. Because obviously, Paul Pogba's agent, Mini Riley, Ola did say uh, on Friday of last week that Paul Pogba is processing uh, leaving uh, Manchester United um, and all that and um, he didn't really say he's going to try and convince him uh, to remain um, at the football club you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer blatantly said you know there has been lots of talk um, and speculation um, about uh, many of our players you know both um, in um, and out but Solskjaer did say throughout the course of the summer you know he's, had, he's held talks with the majority of our players you know he's held talks with Jesse Lingard he's held talks with Lukaku he's also held uh, talks uh, with Paul Pogba um, and all that but he did say you know we don't have any any bids uh, for um, our current uh, players. He also said we don't need to sell players. He said we don't need to sell players, but he says we also, you know, don't need to um, overspend them um, on players um, and all that. So he did say some uh, interesting um, stuff. Uh, did um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Um, but I think he praised Paul Pobby, you know, during that press conference today. You know, he did say, you know, he's got um, a heart um, of gold. He said he's a great professional. He said he hasn't got a problem um, in that uh, with Paul Pobby. But deep down, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, does know um, how much um, of an imperative uh, player um, he is. Uh, also, you know, we've got young upcoming talents um, at Manchester United as well, including uh, Mason uh, Greenwood, you know, Diego Dalla um, and all that. I do believe Diego Dalla, you know, will get his uh, chances, you know, going on um, into this season because um, he's uh, the upcoming uh, future, um, is Diego uh, Dalla. Um, but obviously, we know Anwan Wan Bissaka at that fullback position is going to be our first choice right back going on into this season. But he did mention about Mason Greenwood in his press conference. He did basically say, you know, he's going to get more uh, game time. Well, he's going to be playing more games uh, going on um, into this season, which is uh, very, very good because was very impressive uh, throughout uh, the reserves. 
Edwards uh, was missing there. Greenwood's performances were very, very good. Um, and I think, you know, he did play quite a few games in each towards the back end of last season. In fact, he was very impressive in that Cardiff game on the last game of uh, last season um, and all that. Very, very impressive um, indeed. Um, but I think, you know, he will get selected uh, more reg regularly, you know, going on into this season um, and all that. Um, he gave us an update on Sanchez. I think Sanchez is still in injured at the moment, but I think he did say, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, that Sanchez's injury um, is not, you know, too uh, severe. I think throughout the entirety of this window so far, you know, we have been trying to offload um, Alexis uh, Sanchez um, and all that. But with the club, I find it very difficult to um, offload uh, Sanchez, you know. Obviously, obviously, you know, based on his substantial uh, wages, you know, um, obviously he's on 400 grand a week and, you know, he's potentially rise up to 500 grand a week, you know, based on the image rights and the bonuses. And I think his wages are having a really bad um, effect um, on the football club. But I do probably do believe anywhere Sanchez will be remaining. Well, he will be, he will continue applying um, his trade with Manchester United, you know, going on um, into uh, this season. Um, but yeah, um, as you all do know, we have got Perth Glory um, at the weekend um, and all that. 12 o'clock kick, obviously, obviously it's our first pre-season game. I do believe Paul Popper's still going to be leaving, even though he has travelled with the rest of the Manchester United squad for um, our pre-season tour um, and all that. Um, he was absent from pre-season training last week, was Pogba, so obviously that added more speculation about, you know, um, you know Paul Popper's uh, long-term future. Again, I think Solskjaer has L talks uh, with Paul Popper, um, as he was uh, saying, um, in regards to his uh, long-term uh, future. Solskjaer did say he can, you know, he still believes he can come Convince Paul Pobber to remain um, at the football club, but Paul Pobber's playing and made it clear, you know, he doesn't uh, want to uh, be um, at Manchester United there and all that. Because he did say last month, you know, he's seeking for a new challenge. He publicly admitted that he wants to leave Manchester United. You know, we do know it's been around with you and you went to say that are battling out, um, of course, uh, for um, his services. So, like I said, there's still a uh, lot uh, to address um, in his squad, but hopefully Oleg and Solskjaer, you know, can take us forward and I hope to see vast improvements going on to this season because last season we finished sixth. You know, we didn't uh, win um, any silverware uh, last season. Um, and, you know, we haven't won any silverware uh, for the past uh, couple of uh, seasons um, and all that, which has obviously, you know, been uh, very, very disappointing. You know, we had 20-odd years of success um, under um, Alex Ferguson. And obviously, you know, regards to our managers, you know, no one's going to ever follow um, Alex Ferguson's uh, legacy. You know, we're never going to achieve what we achieved, um, especially in terms of silverware um, under um, Alex Ferguson um, and all that. Uh, but hopefully, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can take us forward. And I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is following um, Alex Ferguson's uh, philosophy. Um but like I said, I hope he's got the abilities and the stature, you know, to get us in that commander position where we do currently uh, want to be. But like I said, we have won a couple, we have won a couple of trophies, um, in you know, in the last six years since Ferguson retired. You know, we won the Europa League and League Cup under Jose Mina. That was in his first season. Obviously, you know, won the FA Cup um, under uh, Louis Van Gaal um, and all that. But um, like I said, we want to be back, you know, to being um, a competitive um, elite uh, level football club. But like I said, you know, the majority of this squad's not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So this is why I said he's still in the process of rebuilding. The only players that are Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the moment are obviously you know, Daniel James and Anwan Bissaka but Solskjaer is still inheriting 11 of Jose Mourinho's players you know he's still inheriting quite a lot of players even from the Van Gaal area you know there's still Matt Arie from the David Moyes area and there's still 4 or 5 players here of course uh, from the um, Alex Ferguson um, area you know don't currently forget so he basically you know, is um, inheriting um, all um, of them um but like I said, looking ultimately, you know that now that Harry Maguire, you know, could be um, our third signing you know, this summer, and um, then hopefully, you know, we can get Bruno Fernandes on the board. You know, we can get Sean Longstaff um, and that um, on the board. But the main part of this video, you know, was to give you an update about Mario Lamina uh, from Southampton um, and all that. There has been a lot of talks about him going on at least in the last uh, couple of days, saying that Manchester United are in for him and that Arsenal and that I'm um, in for him. But in my own opinion, I don't think he would be the right type of signing uh, for uh, Manchester United. Um, if I'm uh, going to be uh, quite um, honest with you. So anyway, guys, uh, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. Um, if you do, consider a subscriber, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.